So the piece is called Ransom Room. The room is based on the historic na narrative of when Pizarro conquered the Inca and captured the Inca emperor Atahualpa. Atahualpa offered a ransom, and the largest room he was held captive in was the dimensions of this room, 22 feet by 17 feet. The emperor extended his hand to a height on the wall and said, I'll fill the room once over with gold, twice with silver. After the ransom was accumulated, began melting it down to distribute it more equitably and get it onto the galleons to send back to Spain. The room is initially staged based on historic narrative descriptions of a palace in Cusco. The walls were lined with gold and in the center of the room there's golden maze and a fountain in the back. My initial interest wasn't so much in the Inca, but I was researching the history of gold as a material, and I ran into this just passing reference to the story, and as a sculptor, the volume of the room really stuck with me, and the idea of filling a space just seems so extreme in a way. Throughout the duration of the installation, the piece is going to evolve so that the corn will leave the room and over the next month I'll be casting different jugs, vessels, and pots at different sites throughout New York City and hand carrying them sort of awkwardly as you see people on the subway with their personal baggage of all sorts, bring them back to the space and the ransom will accumulate. In the last week of the exhibition, I'll return with a set of molds based on these ingot shapes and all of these specific objects will be melted down and the piece at the end becomes almost like a minimalist sculpture. For me, I'm interested in the idea of cultural loss and things that get recorded or documented, collected in, in museums, and all of the things that are left out. So if you think about all, a lot of our consumer goods today, a lot of the stuff that's around us and the highly disposable lifestyles we lead, I think about all of that, sort of where that material ends up at some point in time. And in this case, thinking about this entire period of time that we really have no access to in part because there's so little record left of it. A lot of my work deals with historical archetypes and I've been interested for a long time in um, both creative processes and destructive processes and kind of periods of productivity and periods of great loss and sort of what happens and what the implications of such things are. So the wax that the panels are cast of is red sculpture wax, which is what they use in bronze casting. You make a bronze, you create a positive out of this wax, and then that wax actually disappears to create the real thing. So sort of echoing that process, these panels which are powdered in gold before they're cast will be melted back down and just become this raw material. For me, part of it's the idea that with history, you have a direct and personal experience of events that happen to you and around you, but that experience is completely subjective and just by nature fragmentary from one point in space and time. And so with this piece, someone who comes next week will see something radically different than someone who was at the opening. Someone who comes back at the end will think it's an entirely different piece. And I think this idea that it's almost impossible to see it all or to have kind of a bird's eye perspective on it is important to the work. Mm -hmm.